So I'm going to demonstrate some of the capabilities of the new single cell analysis module available in the CLC Genomics Workbench Premium. And when the single cell analysis module is installed, it comes with lots of tools for doing various tasks within single cell, such as showing UMAP plots and TSNE, performing batch correction, and detecting marker genes. But all of these tools are summarized in two workflows, where you can either start from an expression matrix, for example, from, from cell ranger or from raw reads. And I'm going to open one of these workflows now because the thing with the workflows is they are completely configurable. And you can see that all of these tools are made up into this workflow. And you can configure anything. So in terms of this QC for single cell tool, which detects empty droplets, you can toggle settings on and off and lock them and expose them to users. I've run this workflow on a data set from 10X Genomics of 10,000 mouse heart cells. And it produces all of the inputs here. One of the ways, one of the outputs of the tool are two expression plots, a dot plot and heat map. And these have been configured to look for the 25 most interesting genes. So this is another tunable parameter. If I look at the heat map to start with, then you can see that even though we started just with an expression matrix as input containing only the expressions of cells and, and genes, we've also, as part of the workflow, annotated different kinds of cells. And you can see that this pink set here are the cardiomyocytes that we expect to see in mouse heart cells, this mouse heart cell sample. And you can see that expressed in the cardiomyocytes are the myosin-like uh, chain genes. Uh, the dot plot shows very similar data, but this time is covered, colored by the average expression and has some circles showing the percentage of the cells for each cell type that express the given gene. The most visually appealing output is the UMAP or TSNE plot. And here again, just to show that all of the cells have been annotated automatically with a pre-trained classifier, but it's also possible to train your own classifiers or to add to the pre-trained classifier. There's a lot of different cell types here. If we sort by the abundance of the different cells, we can see that over on this left side, we've got T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes, so different kinds of immune cells. But we also see in this top left-hand corner, the cardiomyocytes that we expect to see in the sample. It's also possible to color by the expression of different genes. I'm going to look for myosin light 7 which is often considered a good marker for cardiomyocytes. And you can see up here that there are some cells that are expressing it, but these guys were also cardiomyocytes. So what I'm going to do now is to explore this other cluster of cardiomyocytes. And I can do that by renaming it and saying, well, these are going to be my unknown cell types. And then I can do a differential expression to compare the unknown cell types with the cardiomyocytes that remain. When this is finished, I get a differential expression uh, table that can be uploaded to IPA. But in this case, I'm just going to look at the most significantly differentially expressed genes that have a positive fold change in the unknown cells compared to the other cardiomyocytes. And the top two hits are MYL2 and MYL3. These are both known to be expressed in the ventricular part of the heart. And so I can, with reasonable confidence, make a selection of these and assign them to a new cluster, which is the ventricular myocytes. Now, in terms of it, uh, knowing that ventricular myocytes are a thing, that's because built in is the Kyogen cell ontology. And you can see that it knows that ventricular myocytes are a subtype of myocyte. So you get some help with annotating cells into different types. Finally, I'd like to show you the scalability of the module in visualizing large data sets. So this is the 1 million neuron data set from 10x Genomics. And you can see it renders very nicely on my laptop, it is very smooth and fluid. Although, of course, it does take some time to generate this kind of plot. <laughs> 